What do I have to do if I want to push this amp right here to its true limit? This might be one of my favorite amplifiers of all times. I dynoed it a while back. Let me show you what happened. At four ohms, I was able to get 527 watts at 1% THD, which is far more than the official power rating listed on the down for sound website. With a two ohm load, this amp will give you 842 watts at 1% THD, which is more than the official one ohm power rating. So this amp has no trouble making its rated power. The way this typically works, if the amp blows right past its two ohm and four ohm ratings, it will totally crush the one ohm test. That's exactly what it did. I was able to get 917 watts. But when Derek Williston tested the amp, he got well over 1200 watts. Why did my test fall short by about 300 watts? This little box right here is why. For this test, I was using a single 100 amp power supply and a big cheap lead acid battery. That setup just could not keep up with the current draw. That caused a voltage drop and the amp just ran out of steam. And that's not the amplifier's fault. When I tested this two ohm stable Kenwood, the same thing happened. The amp completely crushed the four ohm test and then fell short on the two ohm test. Funny enough though, when I hooked it up to a subwoofer instead of a resistor bank, the amp did make its power. It's just easier to drive a speaker than it is to drive a resistor. The question now is, what do I have to do if I want to push this amp right here to its true limit? That's where this big monster right here comes into play. This thing right here is the super beast. It is a pre-assembled battery that you can get from batteryhookup.com. Now stock, it's a 24 volt unit, but when you reconfigure it to 12 volts, it'll give you a 96 amp hour battery bank that's capable of ridiculously fast discharge and recharge rates. If you want one, check the video description for a link and a discount code. I picked up one myself, but ran into a couple of problems with it. First, I don't really like the looks of it. So I spent a little bit of extra money and grabbed some PCB bus bars from JAG35 and I built this bank right here. If you want to pick one of these up, check the video description for a link and a discount code. Second, it didn't play nice with my power supply. These lithium cells have very fast recharge and the bank was pulling enough current to send my power supply in to protect every time I plugged it in. The power supply had to go. I replaced that power supply with not one, but two of these big power base power supplies. My friend Base Dad recommended these and we're about to find out if they're worth the price because these suckers were not cheap. There's no way I could afford gear like this without the direct support of viewers like you. If you want to support DIY audio content, there are several ways that you can help out. First, you can become a channel member. Channel members get access to these cool badges and emoticons. Second, you can join the guys scrolling across the screen here over on Patreon. Patrons get access to behind the scenes content and $25 patrons like Bo, Dylan, Fargo, JD America, Jonas, Sean, David, and Baba get a shout out in the video. And really the simplest thing you can do is check that video description and click on the affiliate links before you make purchases at places like Crutchfield and Down for Sound. I get a small commission and it doesn't cost you a thing. All right, let's put the new test bench to the test. Hooking up the JP8, skipping right over the two and four ohm test since we know the amp can hit those numbers with no problem. Cranking up the volume to find out the one ohm power and we have a problem. The distortion light turns on almost immediately. That means I've got some noise somewhere in the system. But where is the noise coming from? I'm not sure yet. I'll be troubleshooting it in this video. These power supplies emit a high pitched whine. There's always a chance that that's getting fed through the amplifier and being picked up by the DD1. Alternatively, there could be something wrong with my amp. I've had it for a little while and I've been kind of abusing it, so it's always a possibility. Keep watching and we'll figure it out together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out the O scope and compare it to the DD1. If there were a stray signal riding alongside the 40 hertz signal, it would look a little bit wonky, so that's probably not the issue. I thought I'd ask for some help and I sent a message to Derek Wilson with Wilson Audio Labs. He he suggested that I try a few more amplifiers out so I can definitely eliminate the power supplies as the source of the noise and then try grabbing some deoxid and clean the potentiometers, the knobs, on the JP8. But while I've got it hooked up, let's go ahead and see how much power we can get. Notice that the distortion light goes off 
and then it comes back on just as the wave on the scope starts to flatten. I'm gonna go ahead and call that 1,145 watts at 1% THD. And then 1,212 watts at clipping. Look at that wave, it is nasty. There you have it. All it took to squeeze two or 300 more watts out of the JP-8 was $1,000 worth of power supplies and batteries. This is something that people tend to overlook when picking out an amplifier. Amp power has gotten really cheap. In fact, at the time of filming, this JP-8's on a Black Friday sale for only 170 bucks. Even without big upgrades to your electrical, it's gonna make plenty of power, but if you wanna get the most power possible out of these big amplifiers, you've really got to upgrade your electrical, extra batteries, and an extra alternator. Hey, check this out. I decided to shut down the power supplies and see how much juice I could get just off of the batteries. That gives us 1,030 watts at clipping. You'll notice that the distortion light is still on even with the power supply off. So it's probably not the power supply causing that noise. We'll go ahead and test out a couple of more amps to see if we can eliminate the power supply as the problem. This is the JP23. People have tested it before. We know it can do its rated power. Our goal is really to test out the test bench here. So we're just gonna throw it at one ohms and see how much power we can get out of it. It should be good for about 3000 watts. Watching the distortion light, we see that it doesn't light up. So this amp is not picking up any stray noise during the test. That leads us to conclude it's probably something wrong with the JP-8. And the test bench seems to be just fine. Now let's crank it up and see if we have enough juice on the bench to push this amp to its limit. And no, <laughs> no, we don't. We get 1% THD at 2,164 watts and then we completely hit the wall at 2,166. I didn't get this on camera, but both of the power supplies went into protect, so it was all battery. The voltage dropped down to 10.9 volts, which is kind of in the danger zone for these lithium cells. Just so we're clear on this, the amp did not fail to make its power. The test bench ran out of juice. I don't know about y'all, but I spend a lot of time browsing the various Facebook groups, and I read about a lot of people that are running big amplifiers with stock alternators. And sure, a good lithium battery can really help kind of bridge the gap when your stock alternator can't keep up with the power. But batteries don't make power. If you wanna run a big amp like this, you really do need to upgrade the alternator. I went with a Mechman that I ordered from Down For Sound. I've been running it for about a year now and it's done a great job of supporting this big amp inside the truck. As far as my test bench goes, it looks like 2000 watts is now my upper limit at least until I can clear out the next bottleneck. So what is that bottleneck? Right here is where the bottleneck is. Each of these power supplies requires its own dedicated 20 amp circuit. These two plugs here on the corner just happen to be on their own circuit. I'll need to run another dedicated circuit for each additional power supply that I need to add. And that's easy enough in an unfinished garage, but my sub panel is at capacity. So I'm either gonna have to take a break from making videos and do some DIY electrical work inside the garage, but I think instead I'm gonna save up and hire an electrician. In the meantime, I'm gonna order some deoxid and clean up my JP-8, and you can watch this video right here. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.